Ivan Rodic este un blog trotter, cum deja bine știți, un explorator cultural ce e în permanență la curent cu cele mai recente tendințe globale, dar și cu evenimentele culturale și de modă importante. Cred că, cred că e un trend setter născut și lasă să vă spună el mai multe. Please! Salut! Mă cheamă Ivan. That's the only thing I can say in the language except mercy. So, um, it's a pleasure to be here in Bucharest. Um, I'm going to tell you today about a few experiences I've been through over the last few years. What I experienced myself, what I learned, what I, and what I've observed about uh, social media and how bloggers collaborate with brands and what blogging is changing and all these things you are obviously interested in. Um, okay, I'm going to play some videos as well so you don't get too bored. So I'm going to start maybe to, with my, my personal story. Yeah. So, yeah. So seven, uh, a bit more than seven years ago, um, I was not a blogger. Actually, I was working in advertising. I was a copywriter uh, in Paris. And um, yeah, <laughs> just saying. And then so but something like seven years ago, I... Um, I somehow discovered the world of fashion through friends because I moved from Switzerland to Paris and I somehow went to these fashion parties, fashion shows, and I was like, wow, this is so incredible. I mean, people should know about it uh, outside Paris, outside. So I said, like, okay, I can just take some headshots, so like faces, and then put it on, on the web. But it was back in 06. So in 06, there was no blogging culture. There was no article in the newspaper about blogging. It was not a dream job. It was no um, front row bloggers. It was just, it was the, just like a little fun thing to do and eventually peop a few people will look at it. So, um, and then after one year, I mean, the first year was not so that kind of like a hobby, so I was having my job. I started to, to land a few deals with like magazine in Denmark and Japan. And then as well, like the previous um, speaker, everything happened in New York for me as well. Like after six months, I went to New York I had not even a laptop, I had no idea, I had like a very, very bad camera, and I know it was fashion week, but I had no connection. I was staying in like some friends of friends place, super far in Brooklyn, it was really like not, not so nice, but anyway, and then I got this email from uh, Condé Nast, and they were telling me, oh, we know about your blog, we know you're in New York, we'd like to meet you, come to uh, Times Square number four, to, their, um, to the headquarter, and then they were like enthusiastic, and they wanted to like ask me to cover the fashion week, so it was like... Uh, for me, incredible back in that because now it's like, okay, every day someone is having a deal with a magazine is like routine. But back then it was incredible that people would take you seriously for doing something so fun. So, and then I realized there was so much enthusiasm around that, that uh, at the beginning of 2007, I, I decided to make my blogging activity my main activity. Uh, so then I moved to London because I realized as well that Paris was nice once in a while, but for like daily shooting actually london is much more inspiring and diverse so it's why this is like pictures from like a few years ago yeah there's more picture more more recent pictures in middle you have like kazakhstan you have uh, lisbon on the left i mean i'm talking so this is kazakhstan this is lisbon this is paris this is paris this is sydney and this is panama city so as you can see with these pictures there over the last few years through um, all my projects, I got a chance to travel quite a lot around the world. And um, I'm going to show you maybe this little uh, video that's been shot like two years ago in New York, just to give a feeling. I mean, I know you all know about blogs and blogging, but it just gives you a more like a real vibe of how the process is on the streets. So if you can play the, this video, it would be great. It was featured on nowness.com. Maybe you've heard of it. Full screen. Full screen. Working without full screen? I think so. Yes.
I think we can stop the video at that point. We're gonna watch the whole thing. We can go back to the presentation. We can stop this video and go back to the presentation, please. We can stop the video and go back to the presentation, please. Merci. Yeah, I would just like to give like a little piece of aliveness. So as you see, it's like not always, I mean, you, you see on, on a website like tons of images, but for each picture, there's a story behind it and it's like not necessarily easy, but yeah, as I was saying in the video, I think overall it's like about 90% of people agree on being photographed, but sometimes in some countries it's a bit more tricky. So I try to, to go with, if I don't speak the language, I try to go with someone from the, the country, if, if possible a girl, because then if I photograph a girl, it's easier for a girl to talk to another girl. If we're two guys, it, it looks dodgy. So, yeah. Is it not? Okay. Hi. So, yeah, so there was, that's the Face Hunter, the first blog, facehunter.org. And then uh, a few years later, like about three years ago, I created this other website called my, like myname.com, evanrick.com. So I just uh, had the, the feeling that after so much traveling, I, it, would, it would have been uh, ridiculous to not share more than style because I, I encounter as well inspiration in other, other fields and other eras. So it's been like, um, it's like, it's like an, another like online uh, site that is now for me as, as successful as the, the first one. So it's like image, it could be like a bit of, it could be like, uh, fashion show in London, it could be just a girl hanging out on her motorcycle in, in, the, in Colombia, or it could be like some neon art in Australia. So a bit of inspiration because I feel like uh, what happened over the last few years is that um, street style used to be this very romantic activity. So people would go on the street under the rain and the s snowstorm, yeah, so sorry. and then they will finally meet someone and ask this person and there will be a special encounter and it will be like a magic moment and it will be a great picture. And what happened, and they were, so like back seven, six, five, four years ago, a lot of people started blogs in cities around the world and then they realized actually it takes a lot of time. If you have a job and you want to shoot a few times a week, it's a bit time consuming and, and then you don't make so much money out of one blog in one city. So many people in the last three, four years realized they can just buy a ticket to Paris Fashion Week and take a million images there and sell them to magazine. Because if you sell, if you take a picture outside Chanel show, you can sell this, mag this picture to Grazia France or L France, whatever. And if you just take a picture in your hometown, few magazines, less magazines would be interested. So it, in some, somehow for economical reason, it transformed the whole street style scene because now 90% of the images you see on the net that are street style, they're not street style, they're actually fashion week style. And the same in the magazine, they would publish, I've seen like in France or anywhere in Germany, like even six months after the fashion week, they would on the street of Milan. And actually it's just some Russian editors going to uh, Dolce Gabbana show. So that's why I felt, I think it, it kind of, it was like a whole feeling of for me to, to not just be limited to this street style thing, but as well to, to share more inspiration. And uh, as well, a few years, ago I, st I created uh, the Face Hunter show that was like um, a collaboration with MySpace. I don't know if you remember, it's like this old like ancestors of Facebook in some way, more music related. So we, we, we did like a, a few episodes where I was like sort of interviewing uh, creative people. So it just worked for a few episodes and then they didn't have any more money. But now actually I have, uh, I have new partners who are now with who, who are going to be creating a web TV show like he's gonna start, we're gonna start shooting probably in the next few weeks. So it's gonna be a, a program about uh, culture through the style. So it's like understanding what's happening musically, artistically through the style of the people in the city. And uh, in 2010, I got to publish my first book. Uh, the one on the left is actually their international cover. So that was for me uh, something kind of surprising because actually I was thinking, oh, Nowadays, everyone is actually just checking images on the net. So who would buy a book? And it was kind of like a question mark and challenge for me. And surprisingly, there's still some people who are who need to get a, to get some something physical in between the hands. So the the first book was a strictly a street style, and then I published a few months ago this new one called A Year in the Life of a Center, and it's 
this book has somehow followed my evolution and is as well not only street style but kind of as well a travel diary into 30 cities so i i just wanted to i was thinking if i can i would just do face on two face on two well, face on two volume two it would just be somehow or oh, just another street style book and i felt like with this i can create something more personal this for each city there's like a write-up and i think it's it gives you like a kind of a there's still a focus on like cool stylish people but it's kind of give you a a feeling of their, the city I've been to. So you can, like, this is an example of spreads. You can see on the top right, you can see the, the five edition of the book, US, Korean, French, German, and the UK International. And then I have to say that over the last few years, so it's been such a big evolution from having a little blog as a hobby and to now having like all top type of projects all around the world. Nothing would have been possible, obviously, without the social media. It's kind of obvious, but I need to say it. So at the beginning for me, it was MySpace and then Facebook and then Twitter and then Instagram and then Vine and now Vi video Instagram. They just launched yesterday. I don't know if you noticed, but yes. But the problem is that if you don't have the new version, you just think it's a photo. So you should rather take a good cover for the video. But so, um, yeah, I think that's been essential because I, I really started my, my career with no like special connection with people in magazines. So I really built organically uh, my my network, but yeah. So now, yeah, it's kind of like under free centers, like a lot of activities, not just street style. Actually, it's like from organizing exhibition, shooting videos, or campaign. Uh, I, I'm gonna uh, let you know more about my commercial project later. I would there uh, share with you some collaboration of them. So it's kind of becoming like a mini mini brand. So. Um, but actually, boss, actually, this chapter has been already. I'm sure you, you don't know what is street style. Do you know? Someone knows here. So okay, I'm sure you know. But there, um, yeah, I, I kind of like partly I talk about it. But, but I mean, I was just gonna mention maybe the, the the big name that you know, like Scott Schumann, satirist, who is like one of the pioneer who started in 2005. So his work, I think, is 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 great because he's. He has a more of a focus on, on fashion industry people, but he still has kind of like a maybe 20% on 30% on real people who are not necessarily super uber like trendy, but they have something cool and he tried to capture the soul. So I, I, I think he's a great person to be, to follow. And then I'm sure you know as well, um, Tommy Tom from Jack and Jill. So he. He brought, he came a bit later than the, some other photographers, but he brought, he was the first one to bring something else than the head to toes because until him, everyone would just do head to toes street style. And he came with the idea, okay, I need to do something different. And he bring this idea of cropping. So he's famous for his crop of like bags or shoes or like situation, but you don't, you really see, sometimes you see the head, but you, you really see the whole thing. So he, he became so successful that he, he became the new photographer for style.com before it was Scott Schumann. And um, yeah, so I mean, this is just a little thing I want to, to show you. Look, this is, on the left, you probably recognize, do you know her name? Okay, so she's very famous. And on the right, you recognize her? No, she's not famous at all, so you don't recognize her. So on the left side, it's a picture taken outside a fashion show during Paris Fashion Week of Anna Della Russo, who is this socialite slash Vogue Nippon uh, editor at large, who is like photographed by everyone, like street style darling, who's been then, she got successful. I mean, she was hardly known before and because of her street style fame, she could like uh, get her a collaboration with H&M and like have a launch her perfume. So is, she's the prototype of person who, who like took advantage of this street style craziness. And on the right, it's, a, it's just like a, not a random girl, but I mean a, a beautiful girl, let's say, that I just photographed at 8 in the morning in Sydney who was not at all going to any fashion week. So I just want to, it's the kind of example for me of um, Anna Del Russo. Russo, she's the kind of person who will just have one outfit for one show and she will just not wear this clothes in real life. It's kind of like the Oscars. It's just like a, I don't know, it's kind of artificial for me. So I, it's why I have this sort of mixed feeling nowadays about what's happening at, at the Fashion Week. So I, I go there, but I just try to be selective and I don't think someone like her for me is so inspiring because she's just like, um, I mean, it, she's not really wearing something that is 
her style. I mean, it's more like just, okay, let's do like a, it's like a big um, coup d'éclat kind of thing, but I don't know, it's like Olympic Games, but it's, I don't know, I feel it's kind of disconnected for the reality. I, I prefer the beauty, the reality of like this anonymous girl. Anyway, just my opinion. So yeah, maybe, I guess everyone, like when I travel, people always ask me, so, but wh how can you, how can you become successful? What are the secrets? What are your advices? I want to create a blog. I mean, there's so many bloggers around. I want one million followers on Instagram. What to do? So actually, it's, there's, it's like success in all, all the fields. There's, there's not so many answers. I mean, it's, um, you can, I mean, it's the same in music. You can ask uh, your favorite band, how did they make it? And they will tell you the story. But then it doesn't mean that if you do the same, that it will be successful. It just happened in some way because someone was at the right place at the right time. But, I would say, if I had to give advice here still, I would say try to, to, to have uh, your own voice, like a special voice. I would say, especially nowadays, if you think about personal style blogger, there's a million of them. Most of them are like pretty and they're happy and they're romantic and have cupcakes. And so there's a stereotype. So if you just another one in the stereotype, you might have a hard time being noticed. So maybe if you think about Leandra, maybe you, you, you follow uh, the man repeller. Okay, you love her. So she's a okay. She's an American blogger, New York based, and she she's relatively new. I mean, she's only got popular two years ago, less less than that. And she was kind of the first blogger who was not somehow trying to be pretty. She's she's like she's okay. She's nice, but she's not like a super beautiful girl, and she's not trying to be beautiful. She's she's fine with posting picture where she doesn't look so nice, and she's so she has humor. She doesn't take herself seriously, and she's actually smart as well because she's like kind of more of a journalist and she has analytics. So she really brought something different that didn't exist before on the blogosphere. So that's something that can help, like in any um, competition situation, if you bring something that doesn't exist, you have more chances that people might like you or hate you, but at least if they like you, they might love you. So, and, but then of course, then it's like, uh, you have to be a good, uh, good person and you need to, I guess, being, occupy the territory I would say online and offline. I think so. Obviously, it's important to to update as as much as possible, ideally every day or at least five times a week. And then I think the social media are essential. So, um, but the thing is, it, you cannot just be a geek and and just post everything at home. And I think it's the ideal scenario is to be visible in real life. So it's like attend events, fashion weeks, and then as well to be strong. But Obviously, the more you are on all social media, the more you have chances that people will see your name. So it's why it's important to not have three different versions of your name on Instagram, on Twitter, on, on Facebook. I mean, it's like, you should be really like, um, yeah, on the, on, the, on the exact same page for the names. And uh, I mean, the, the thing is, I mean, it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of true that the go, go to Paris Fashion Week is, I mean, there's a lot of people, it helped a lot of people actually. I mean, but the thing is nowadays as well, it's difficult because it's, millions of thousands of billions of people who actually go to these fashion weeks with more or less reasons and some get noticed, some don't, but it's definitely could be like a booster because there's so much like media attention, so much blogging attention, so many people who maybe if you're like, you look great and you're there every day, maybe eventually some people will remember you and then you will be kind of all over. Yeah, so I hope you're okay. Um, I'm just maybe gonna maybe go through like a little explanation about the evolution of fashion before and after the internet. So before the internet, the concept of inspiration and of fashion was very vertical. So you had a few fashion editors who had the monopoly of the information because they would be the only one invited to fashion shows. And then they could decide, okay, next season is gonna be black, gold, futuristic, ethno and the mass would have no other sources of information. They would be like, okay, that's right, okay, that's the trend, or they would just say, I hate it, and they don't care. But it was kind of like limited options. And then in a, in a very, it's kind of in the same way, but in different manner to explain it. Um, if you think about their, the concept of identity and style, if you think about your great parents, they couldn't really decide if they want to look more rock chic or more, uh, elegant, more sporty. It was more like, okay, if they were born in that family, in that town in, of Romania, they would look like that. And it was kind of like, kids would just wear grown-up clothes for kids. I mean, small size, I mean. So it was kind of fatality. And then, in the, second part, in the second part of the 20th century, 
appeared first in, uh, in the US and in, in England, they're the subculture, the tribes. So it was like mus very music related. So people started to say, oh, we like this music, we're gonna dress accordingly. So from uh, bikers, rockers, mods, hippies, hip hoppers, whatever. So people would look extremely different from one group to another group, but within the group, they would look very similar, just like small variation around the same thing. But it was not completely individual, but already a little bit more of a choice. And then what, with the internet, what happened, the most amazing revolution in the history of humanity, I mean, in terms of like style, let's say, is that people, let's look at this picture that I've taken in, in Tokyo. So this girl is their obviously extreme example of what I'm talking about, but still it's, it says a lot about it. She's, her outfit doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you think about the meaning, but like, she's wearing like a trench coat that is more like a kind of posh sort of item. Then she's wearing this um, Disney, Mickey Mouse lunchbox and then this more grungy uh, white pants and then this, I think, fur, fur scarf. Anyway, so it's kind of a, some people would call it like the supermarket of style. So it doesn't, it's not like, oh, you were born in Romania, you have to look Romanian. No, it's like, okay, wherever I was born, I just want to be myself and I want to choose today. I feel uh, listening to that music, to wear this and that and that, and I decide for myself. It's just, the only meaning is like, I like it and that's it. And tomorrow, if I want to look different, I want to look different. So that's something that really got accelerated by, by the blogging culture, because blogging culture is, has promoted more than ever this sense of like, okay, I'm a 14 years old girl living in Chicago, and I like to wear stupid hats, and I like it. So you can like it or not, but if this girl happened to be, if she's followed by many people, she becomes successful, and she become influential, and then, it, there are so many people like that. So now it's like there's like thousands and thousands of different options to be inspired by someone else. And, um, and I think that's the, from all my, my travels over around the world in 75 countries, I feel like the new generation is like willing, no one wants to be stuck into something. I mean, you, can, you might like a style for one day, a few days, but you don't want to be stuck into it. It's the same in music. I think people less than ever listen to only one genre. It's more like your playlist is there is a big tutti frutti. So, um, am I, how much more time do I have? 20 moments? Okay. Can I have some water as well? Can I have some water, please? Thank you. So, uh, yeah, maybe like more in a more brand perspective. So what, maybe it's as well interesting for everyone, but so what do you need to know about social media? Um, if you are in brand and you want to work with social media, I think one of the key words is engagement. Comparing to, if you compare with, the tra thank you. If you compare with traditional medias where you would like, let's say, an ad campaign or a, a commercial on TV, where you would, just, you would just put it up and then people can watch it or not, but you don't know. There, the thing with social media is engagement. So you have to create the content uh, that make people participate and answer and react and like and, and retweet and repeat and blah, blah, blah. So engagement is, I think, the key, one of the key points. And, uh, as well, I think, uh, telling a story. Um, uh, I think because on, on the social media, you cannot be too, you cannot be not completely corporate and serious. You need to be slightly more entertaining because the, the format of social media comes mostly from uh, sharing with friends. So brands afterwards came onto this platform and so they have to adjust and they have to be slightly more friendly than they are just maybe on a regular uh, situation. And then, um, yeah, as well, what, I what is as well a key point with social media and that, that is the essence of their, how it works is that you um, if, you if I convince your friends, I have 50% of chances to convince you as well. Because for example, let's say you read an article on the web and it, on the bottom it has this you know, Facebook kind of plug thing and you see that one of your friends already liked it, I mean you have more interest for the article because generally it's like connected to your life and to your friends. So I think this is very important. And then I think this is what I was saying before. I think campaigns in social media should not look too much like just a regular campaign that you put on social media, they should be like custom made for social media. So, oh, but, sorry, I think there was, a, oh, there was an animation, but no. Okay, 
So yeah, social media never sleeps. So it's like apparently 250 million people check at least five times a day your Facebook. I'm sure you do even more if you do it on your mobile. So it's really uh, the new standard of a media where you can like, you don't share anymore once every two weeks. It's like some, you need to update constantly the flow because people just want, just spend their life refreshing, 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 and they want something new, something new, something new. So it's like, you don't have to think in terms of like a few infos, it's like a, a, f a flow of, um, of content. And uh, over all the, the social media you, we know, I think Instagram is the one has been growing the most over the last few months, much more than visible. Everyone is talking about uh, Pinterest, but Pinterest is, it has got some hype last year, but it's not as, it has much less user than Instagram because Instagram is in your pocket. And that is the power and it's like uh, everyone all the time. So, and their Pinterest is actually their, the specificity of this uh, social network is that it's their, the most feminine of all. So 80% of the users are female. And um, <clears throat> actually I have a profile, but I don't use it so much. I don't just, I guess it's more like a homey thing. It's like you stay at home and you do your like personal mood board, but it's much, comparing to Instagram where you are out and about and you share your experiences with your friend, you tag them. It's, it's a very different vibe, but it's much more brand friendly because it's for a brand, they can almost create like, it's almost an extension of the online store. They can have the link on the product and you click and you're on the online store. So it's kind of more commercial in some way. Because if, for example, Instagram is very fun, but it's, it's more tricky for a brand because you have this clickable link on the post itself, only on the page of their profile. And um, I think as well, Facebook is, Facebook page for a brand is essential because for a lot of people, it's much easier, it's much more natural to go on the Facebook page of the brand than just to go on the, on the page brand. Because for a lot of people, Facebook is their home. It's like the online home. So everything, they know everyone, da -da -da -da. So if they go on the page, they feel they're still in their little territory and going on a real website is like so much effort. So I think it's, it's something quite essential for brands. And uh, but it, was, it was what I was talking about before. So obviously you get more influenced and by your friends than by regular advertising. If, if one of your friends retweeted or liked something, for you it has much more value if, than if it's just a regular um, content article. And um, so yeah, I've been asked to tell you about the tips and tricks to be successful in social media. But I guess in some way I've covered it all. But so the engagement is essential not to, I think for a brand it's, it's not easy to, to have the right tone on social media because on one hand you cannot pretend to be just people's friend because people know that you're a brand and at the end you want to sell but at the same time if you're too corporate people will just not be interested to interact with you on, on, their, on your platform. Um, yeah, consistency as I said, I mean it, it's for sure you, you need to be there every day, but you mean as well, it's a, it's a fine line between being um, visible and people not forgetting you about you, but at the same time, you don't want to spam people. So, yeah, you should, you should find your own limits, I guess. Uh, and then as well, obviously, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite important, it's like you have to, let's say if you use Instagram, you can link it to your Facebook or to your Twitter, so the more there's interconnection between your social media channel, the better it is. And then the good timing, um, I mean, it depends how you consider it, but like, for example, if you want to reach a global audience, you have to think about time zones. Like, I mean, if you just, if you just want to have Romanian followers, you can just post it, I would say, during the day. I mean, I guess it's good to, start to post starting in the morning and afternoon, but I guess too late at night. If you post something, at, you wake up and you say, oh, I'm gonna post at two in the morning. I mean, it sounds fun, but you, you, you might have less reaction. And the thing is, it's exponential because if you have less people who see it, so less people will realize that their friends saw it and then you're gonna have much less uh, likes or follow or everything. So I think it's important to pass it to where people are awake. And then if you have, uh, I mean, for example, if you want to reach more like Americans, there's usually a, a huge market for, for, for bloggers, you should think about posting it in the afternoon. So when the New Yorkers, at least East Coast is, is awake. So if you post like at, um, 2 p.m. is already 8 a.m. So I think that could be as well something to think about. And obviously, um, 
the whole mentioning tagging hashtagging is important but I, I would not some people take it too seriously because you see some people like putting like 25 hashtags uh, underneath their Instagram but I don't I don't think it made anyone famous to have millions of Instagram is that good is that happy is that day is that fashion I don't I mean it's more like a teenage thing but I think it makes sense more if you have added an event let's say you are here and you hashtag this so maybe someone who doesn't follow you will click on this hashtag and then they will find your picture and then end up following you so I think it, that's important as well it's important as well to try to to be live so because people might be interested in this event now maybe tomorrow less people will click on the hashtag yeah so we almost done I hope you are you're fine so I'm gonna show you a few collaboration I've done with brands so maybe you because you're like thinking oh these bloggers now they make money and they travel but what's the deal and how does it work and what kind of collaboration what kind of project so I think uh, in general uh, there's as many collaborations as people I mean not even more actually like each collaboration is a special case and for example some bloggers are beautiful so then they're gonna be used more as models some are talented photographers they can be used as photographers some are good at social media they're gonna be used as social media so and often it's a package I mean most of them when brands hire me they want me to do kind of videos and photos and social media maybe hosting being at an event and getting some press coming and around. so uh, this is a, um, a project I worked on for Giorgio Armani eyewear so there uh, uh, the brand asked about 10 photographers in 10 part of the world to take pictures of beautiful real people wearing their glasses I mean Giorgio Armani glasses so that's kind of the, the study case sorry so yeah so it's, it's kind of the typical scenario of a brand who obviously has its regular campaign with models and it's very polished and clean and beautiful and it's great but in some ways very far away from the average consumer so this is the tendency a lot of brands want to keep it real or at least trying so in these projects so they, they would have on their on their page this gallery this moving gallery where you can like the images of real people photograph with the, the glasses and then on as a continuation of this project they asked me to do like a little video it was my, my first uh, direction of a little fashion film so it was done in Stockholm in like two days so the frame is the name of their the film so we, we can uh, play the video please as well the concept is as well it's shot with mostly non models like r just pretty real people go back to the presentation so actually this video was exclusively produced for the fan page of Giorgio Armani so you're gonna think oh only for the fan page but they have 10 million likers so they need to entertain them they cannot just post product shots so that's I think the challenge of, of brands nowadays is like to, what to put on the fit it's good to have 10 million because they have a name so people will just follow them even before knowing what kind of content they put on but um, I think you I mean, of course, you can just post your campaign, but I guess uh, the people who follow Giorgio Armani are not exactly the one who buy. I mean, I guess they are, they are the younger sec segment of their customers or potential customers. So the people who follow them on, on, on Facebook, they are 
kind of the digital generation and they need some kind of blog looking content. So things that looks like they're the kind of thing they look at usually. And then another project I worked on for the brand Esprit. Do you have Esprit in Romania? Yes? No? No. You've heard, it's, it's a high street brand. Uh, for, it's present kind of all around the world. And uh, there, so we did this campaign called I Love My City. It was in four, we shot it in four cities. There was uh, New York, Paris, Amsterdam, and Hong Kong. In each city I've chose, I picked a girl, like a nice cool girl who was like, show me around her favorite spots. And we did out of it a video and a lot of photos behind the scene, pictures of the girls. And in, so if you go on the, on, on the page of Esprit, you can go through their, the favorite places of the girl, the interview, and the video. We're gonna play now the, the, the video from Amsterdam with Anna. Anna, she's, her, uh, she's in her mid-20s, but she created like a year ago Ensemble.com. It's like an online magazine about, let's say, fashion and culture. We can play their, the video, Esprit.
we can we can stop the video now. It's almost over anyway, so it's just some cocktails, so it's fine. We, we can stop and go back. We literally finished, but we're gonna go back to the presentation. We can stop the video, please. So j just one word about this. So this is the kind of campaign that is more like a lifestyle. So for example, each girl in these four films were given a, a bunch of clothes from Esprit and they could choose and pick up what they like and work, mix, it, mix it up with their own wardrobe. So at the end, it creates some kind of entertaining film where the brand is a little bit visible, but it's not just a regular commercial. So there's a typical project that is very uh, online and social media friendly. And uh, yeah, but I think we don't have too much time. We're going to skip this one. So uh, thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed. And if you have any question, feel free. Mult to mask. Întrebări? Două, trei întrebări? Just some sure. questions. Hi, Ivan. Hey. First of all, uh, Face Hunter, that's amazing. I love what you do. Uh, this is Alexandra. I'm from Cosmeticat. Um, I'd like to ask you a more fun question. I don't know how many times do you get asked this. Uh, you talk about this authenticity and beauty in non-models. And I want in, to in ask where, you... Where? I didn't understand your question. Oh, okay. Intensity of? You, you talk about the beauty in non-models and uh, the girls that are no non-models. And they're very authentic. And uh, I want to ask you... <laughs> How many times uh, did you fall in love with your female subjects over the years? Every day. <laughs> every day, every time. But I mean, I guess it's normal to create a, a special connection with your subjects. I mean, if you're going to be a machine and just be like taking pictures like a paparazzi, you don't care. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah. of course, I, I choose the people I like and I do my own thing. So, you know. That's great. Yeah, and the second happen. question would be, um, more about your work, uh, how would um, a brand, what would be the ideal pitch from a brand? Because you get, I bet you get um, pitched a lot of, uh, from a lot of brands and uh, I just assume you only take the ones that fit your style and, uh, and your brand, basically because you're a brand. So I want to know what characteristics should the project have? To, for you to be able to take it? Uh, it's quite simple. They should give me enough freedom to do what I, what I like to do so I can create some exclusive content for them that looks enough like the kind of thing I do usually. So if I feel comfortable, then I can do my thing and I can be proud of sharing it because it's, it looks nice anyway, I'm fine with that. Oh, okay. And I don't want to hug the mic, but one more question is about what is the, the weirdest fashion habit you ever seen in all around the world during your work. And that's it, I promise. Well, I mean, yeah, in Brazil, you have some kind of weird uh, behaviors. I mean, in Brazil, is that you have some small group pockets of e extremely stylish women, not men. But uh, then they have this, for many years, they had this trend of like the Nike shocks. I don't know if you've seen them. They like sported some of the most ugly running shoes ever designed. I mean, it's not like, I, I know that many girls or guys wear this like cool running shoes and they're kind of stylish and it's part of the look. I mean, I understand that it's totally fine. But they were, honestly, they were like chunky and ugly. I mean, and it's like, like teenagers will wear them and this woman with their Vuitton will wear them thinking it's like kind of casual elegant. I think it was so wrong. I mean, it's okay to mix up something high and low, but it was just so badly done. And so many people over so many years were doing it in Brazil. It was insane. But I think now it's a bit less. Sure. So you talked about originality. What do you think makes your blog different? What makes your blog different? But I guess my, my, my work is, is special because I don't focus only on their, on their fashion industry and fashion weeks. Or not only, I mean, I cover a lot of random places. I mean, with Nepal or Jakarta or Iceland or Chile. And I try to, I, I go to like random fashion. I was in Kazakhstan Fashion Week, for example but I like to be on the street of like all these places. So I think I have a balance between the real like industry world and the non-industry. And, and I, I think I bring something fun because it's not just about the look, but it's about everything. I don't know. I just, I think it's like a slightly more entertaining concept. 
Yes. And I, another question, sorry. So I uh, saw a lot of uh, your pictures from all over the world pro uh, promoting your book, but how about the other countries? How did you get there? Sorry? I mean, how did you get to all those countries you traveled to? Usually airplane, sometimes train. <laughs> I mean, it depends, but rarely by skateboard. Thank you for the questions. I mean, how do I get there? I mean, every trip is a different story. I mean, it's like, it could be like, one is, a, I can be like, okay, Esprit, fly me to Hong Kong, to New York, Amsterdam, Paris for this job. We spend three days there, we shoot nonstop, and then I, I fly back. That's an example of project. And then you have like the invitation, people who say, oh, we want to invite you to a festival in Panama, and they don't have money, but they can just fly you and give you a hotel, and you, since it's something I've never been to, so I'm interested, I'll, I'll do it. And then you have places where I go, because I, I want to do, but it's like, it's kind of a mix of like projects, invitation, and what I like to do. That seems really cool. Hi, my name is Daniela Kamrath. I have a question for you regarding the fact that your work is now well recognized, and it's, cons and it's re recognized by the people that pay for it as well. Do you find the pressure of staying as cool as your work sometimes? Not really. I just, I'm so busy, I just, do, I just do it, and I don't think about it so much. I mean, I can be aware of it sometimes, but it doesn't pressure me too much, actually. I mean, I, will, I don't have to be doing the same thing forever anyway, so I can evolve, and for now it's, it's good, and if things are different, I will just slightly evolve. No, I'm talking about you as a person. Yeah. I don't, I don't feel all this pressure, actually. I mean, I, I feel the pressure of doing everything I need to do in a, such a short time, but not the coolest thing, no. I don't think about it. And what do you do with a camera? What do I do with this camera? Yeah. I just hang out with it. This is an accessory. It's, not, it's just a toy. I'm like the white brand boy of Europe. No, I mean, I, I take pictures sometimes, and sometimes I just have it with me just for fun. Both. Are we good or? Altineva. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank Merci. you. Merci.